Hello and welcome to my uh, latest video and in this video we're going to focus mainly on Helium uh, MIDI sequencer and the massive update that it's had. Now one of the new features we've added is a new chord track feature which uh, allows us to uh, specify chord sequences and send those to other apps uh, via uh, either MIDI or some new protocol we've designed called Tone Packets. Not only are there hundreds of uh, predefined chords for you to choose from, but if you wish, uh, if you have a chord that is not part of that uh, uh, that predefined set, you can actually define your own using this little pop-up. Now, some of the inner workings of Helium have had drastic changes, including the way we deal with uh, copy, paste, duplicate, and things like that within the editor. This not only helps with uh, sections with leading space, uh, it also helps uh, copy and paste while the, uh, while the sequence is running. And we've even gone back to the mixer and uh, done some rearranging here, which now allows us to do a uh, bulk selection of mutes and solos, which uh, helps uh, during live performances. And for those of you that wanted more uh, scales other than the uh, uh, basics we've now added over a hundred more new scales for you to choose from and as you can see now the grid actually now reflects uh, the notes available on the scale another big quality of life uh, improvement really is the controller line because uh, previously we had this big long list of controllers up to 127 controllers some of them were predefined names and some of them weren't and it was a bit of a traumatic experience working your way through this but now we have a pop-up editor that allows us to determine not only what appears on this menu but also to be able to uh, rename these and we can load and save uh, custom banks of cc's so that we're not plowing through uh, too many cc's while uh, working on a on a piece of music so let's rewind a little and take an in-depth look at how the new chord mode works uh, within Helium. So as you can see here, I have a copy of uh, AUM running and I have three uh, apps loaded. Uh, a copy of Synthmaster 2, a copy of Evolver and finally a copy of Strummer. And these are going to be controlled by an instance of Helium which I have here. Now Evolver and Strummer are two of my own apps which uh, include um, tone packet support but Synthmaster is an example of an app that doesn't. I'll explain that later. Now if we click down in the bottom left on the controller button the controller lane will appear. Now the controller lane uh, in this case allows us to uh, modulate CC values. If we click on where it says velocity you'll see that there's a list appears of all the CC parameters we can modulate. But if we long press this button, you'll see we have a mode. We can change to song mode. And uh, in this mode, we have a bunch of loops we can select. But if we long press and uh, select chord mode, you'll notice when we click on the uh, major chord that's displayed there, we have a massive list of just about every chord under the sun, which we can select uh, if we wish. So let's go back to the major chord and then ensure that the uh, the add chord tool is selected. Just make sure it's not on uh, selection. And we what we can do now is we can tap, hold and drag within the controller area to add a chord. Now the chord is set up with a, a set of defaults and if we long press on that we get this pop-up window. Now from within this window I can change this uh, C major chord uh, to an A minor because that's the chord I want to start with. Now this window allows us to set up things like uh, an inversion. Uh, we can also make the chord rootless which means it doesn't play the bass. And we can also add a slash note which it replaces the bass if it's a rootless chord. Now it's important to note that um, inversions and uh, such like uh, and the root notes, slash notes and everything are not reflected in this little piano roll here. They're the raw notes of the chord that you've got selected. You can add additional notes in here and if you notice it changes from a chord to a cluster and if we click and revert back to the chord you'll see your additional notes are all being removed. 
So let's continue and add an additional chord or two just so that we can have a sequence to demonstrate. Uh, the second chord I've added is a, a C major. I'm going to change the third chord to be a D major. And uh, yeah. And then on the fourth chord, I'm going to make that uh, probably an F major. So if memory serves me correctly, they're the first four chords of uh, House of the Rising Sun, for anyone that wants to know. Now, although we've defined a set of four chords, uh, we need to tell each track whether to follow the chord track or whether it's independent. Uh, right now, if I was to try and play back uh, AUM, um, nothing would happen. So uh, there would be no uh, MIDI notes or anything uh, sent out to any tracks. And that's because the chord track is currently disabled. So the first thing we need to do is head to the main menu and we have something called chord mode options. And here we can see chord mode is currently off so we need to turn it on. Also there's this uh, anti chord anticipation submenu and it's important to come in here and ensure that MIDI note out on track one is set to default. Now if we wanted to do the same for track two, we could hit the track button, hit two, and then go back into the menu and enable it for track two. Now all we need to do is uh, take an app like Synthmaster and ensure that it's listening to the uh, right port uh, from Helium that is sending this chord track. In this case, port one is where uh, track one is being output to. So just to clarify, for track one to participate in sending chord data or note data for the chords, we need to go into the uh, chord options menu and make sure that track one is set to default. If we click on that sub menu, we see we have various options, including off. So for now, just set to default, which is essentially just on. So this is the way we uh, enable the chord track to send uh, chord notes on a particular track. Now, um, Synthmaster 2 uh, was li listening to part 1, but my two apps uh, have built-in tone packet support. Tone packets are something different, they're not note on, note off, they are sysx, and uh, in order to pick up on the tone packets, we need to be connected to uh, the um, control out of Helium. And we also need to uh, tell Helium to send uh, chords uh, to uh, this particular port by going into the uh, chord anticipation and making sure currently it's switched off uh, for tone packets. And what we need to do is set that back to default. Now Evolver should respond to those tone packets. And as you could hear there, uh, Evolver was actually changing chord as expected. So let's take a look at Strummer. And we're going to plumb Strummer up so that it is listening to that same um, tone packets control out part and uh, all should be good to go now. But let's just um, uh, increase the strummer output just so that we can hear it over the top of Evolver and Synthmaster. Now I want you to notice also that the uh, sequencer for Evolver and uh, strummer stopped uh, once the, we'd gone past the end of a chord. So if we were to shorten uh, that uh, second and third chord a little and replay, uh, it should, we should hear that stop and start. Okay, that probably wasn't quite big enough, so let me just make it a little bit more obvious and uh, try that again.
Now there are many apps out there that have a built-in arpeggiator and they usually work by detecting a series of three or more notes and uh, calculating the chord that's been played and then play uh, accordingly. But if you don't register each note of the chord before the next beat or the notes apply uh, arrive at different times this can upskit the arpeggiators and make them not play the same thing every time. So the solution in this case is to send the chords slightly ahead of time before the next beat. And this is what anticipation is all about. So in this case I've uh, just enabled Synthmaster so because it reacts to notes and has no arpeggiator enabled we'll be able to hear this. So I'm going to first show you that the anticipation is set to de default which is essentially zero anticipation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play back this set of chords with an anticipation of default which is zero. And as you could hear there, the actual chords were played exactly on beat. But if we go in here and change the chord anticipation to eighth of a beat, listen to the difference. And this is exactly what most uh, sequences with an app uh, require really, uh, that the chord be registered early. So this is a, a, a nice tool in your arsenal. Now there's a potential issue using chord tracks and anticipation uh, that you might come across. Uh, uh, it caught me out a time or two and I just want to point this out to you. Uh, because each track can send uh, um, its to its own port and channel, um, if you long press on the track button, you can see this track one sends out to channel one port one. And if we go to track two, it's sending to channel two port one. So both track one and track two are sending to the same port. Uh, what you can also do in, in here now is we can set, set up the anticipation for the chord track within this uh, pop-up menu. But if, we, if we're not careful and we set two tracks with differing anticipation values, what you're going to end up doing is sending out a chord track twice on the same part. And that will re sound or, or reflect itself as a doubly hit notes. If you ever, that ever happens, just simply uh, change the uh, output port, say uh, on track two, just set the output port to port two and uh, use separate ports instead of separate channels. Another significant thing to note is that not all DAW supports SysX messages, so tone packets are not available on every DAW. Now another major change to Helium is the new clipboard functionality, which replaces the old one because it was a bit clumsy. Um, now when we uh, make a selection of notes, as you can see here I've got a bunch of random notes, and if I attempt to select those notes you'll see now a white horizontal bar appear in the ruler, and that bar is an indication of the uh, stacked and end of that block that I've highlighted. Now if I change the uh, grid size to something smaller like 16th notes, you can see that controls the granularity of that horizontal bar. I'm going to put it back to quarter notes and uh, select that first few note, uh, notes. Notice there's nothing on beat one. There is no note on beat one, but the horizontal bar encompasses beat one. If I copy that block now and then touch in the ruler to place the paste cursor and then hit paste, you'll see even the leading space is pasted, which I think is a lot better than we had before. Also notice that the paste cursor is different from the play cursor. I can tap anywhere off that uh, selection to remove the selection and the paste cursor will disappear. And if we undo that and uh, make the selection again, and this time hit the duplicate, you'll see two things. One, the duplicate or the menu stays open and B, we can carry on duplicating and the duplicate also copies the leading space. So 
so now we have both a play cursor and a paste cursor we're able to paste uh, while the transport is running and it doesn't interfere with us it doesn't move the position we're going to paste and this functionality is also extended to the uh, CC controller lane so if we drag a selection in the CC controller lane you'll see the same horizontal bar appear in the ruler and uh, we can duplicate and do everything that we uh, did to the notes now let's quickly go over the controller menu customization and uh, as I showed you at the beginning of this video if we uh, head off to settings uh, right at the bottom of this menu you'll see an edit controller list and this brings up this little floaty toolbar now as I mentioned before uh, this CC selection menu can get quite large there's a lot of items in here and you possibly won't need all those items and it might improve workflow if you were to limit the number of items that appear in this menu now you could do that by customizing the bar we can make a selection uh, using uh, this menu here and then we can enable or disable them by clicking on this little button at the start of the uh, of the dialog the little check mark so if I select CC3 and uncheck it it will no longer appear in this pop-up menu now you might take something like the breath controller and repurpose that for something else so if you uh, go to the little uh, editor uh, floating editor window and select breath controller you're then able to press the little uh, edit icon uh, to the right the little pencil icon and give that a new name uh, so this can be anything you like but keep them short there isn't a lot of room in those menus and then when we take a look at the breath control in uh, the main CC menu you'll see that uh, it is changed name now if we press the load CC template button on that little floaty toolbar we can load a minimal uh, CC set what that does is that gives you a starting point to start editing your own uh, custom set as you can see here there's very few items on this menu so to add additional items to this set just select the item you want in this menu like uh, expression and just tick it and it will appear in that minimal set now once you create a set you like you can press the save button and save a cc template file now if i wanted to put the expression cc back uh, in the menu all i need to do is uh, select it from the list and then press this reset button over here and uh, it will be put back as it was with the same name if we long press the reset button it will reset everything in the list in other words return the CC controller menu to its default state now to close out the video I want to just take a quick look at the mixer uh, we've made a few changes in here uh, specifically uh, when the mixer is positioned and the mixer is closed and reopened uh, it now retains its position even if it's slightly off screen I know sometimes people like to move it off screen while they're working with it now you'll also notice the mute and solo buttons are no longer just together on one line they're now split up on multiple lines so we can uh, select the mute solos uh, easier first off and now we can if we tap hold on say uh, mute 3 and drag to the right we can mute a whole selection of tracks at the same time and the same thing goes for the solo button so we can mass select them or mass deselect them uh, quite easily you'll also find now that when you're using the faders you're not accidentally moving the mixer window around so that's just about it for this update uh, i'll have new updates of evolver and um, uh, strummer <laughs> to come but uh, for now thanks for watching the video don't forget to thumb up and subscribe to the channel